Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Many Tribes, One Kingdom. Today we will be discussing the Essenes. <laughs> So the Essenes, I'm actually willing to bet that unless you're very into biblical history, specifically textual history, or first century Judaism, you probably don't know too much about who these people are. So to give you a little context, we read about the Essenes from Josephus, the Jewish historian, and he records that they were another sect that were active during his day, just like the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Zealots. And... The closest you could compare the Essenes to would be like the Pharisees. They were very close in their theology to the Pharisees. However, they did have some major differences. So first off, the Essenes were more of an isolated community. They were spread throughout the land, but of course you know them probably most well from the Dead Sea Scrolls. The community at Qumran was the ones who recorded the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it's believed that they were Essenes. They held to very strict laws of ritual purity. They practiced uh, baptism by immersion. And they also were very strict about the Sabbath. Another big thing to know about the Essenes is that they kind of separated themselves from the temple life in Jerusalem. They viewed the Institute of the Pharisees and Sadducees is very corrupt, very worldly centered, and so they separated and formed their communities in order to specifically focus on God and on keeping themselves ritually pure. In order to join the Essenes, you actually had to go through a long probation period, essentially. And what this was is you would be watched for a long time to make sure you upheld the ideals of the Essene community before you were allowed to join. We really don't know exactly when the Essenes began. We know that they were active at least two centuries before the birth of Christ, but that's really all we have on their history. Just like with the Sadducees and the Zealots, the Essenes disappeared after the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. However, they did take, some of them did take part in the war between the Jews and the Romans. Now, the New Testament nowhere mentions the Essenes. None of Jesus' followers are noted as being Essenes. However, that doesn't mean that they weren't active and present. Some scholars believe that John the Baptist might have been an Essene. It's possible. He did practice many of the same things as them. However, John the Baptist had some major differences with the Essenes, most notably that he was a very public preacher, whereas the Essenes were more closed off. They were in their own communities, per se. Now... We do see something like the Essenes in the church today when you have, for instance, the Christian communities that really separate themselves from everybody else. That's really the best I could compare to the Essenes. Theologically, they held to the immortality of the spirit, they held to resurrection, they held to judgment, and they held to the inerrancy of scripture. It's because of the Essenes that we have the most comprehensive collection of Old Testament scrolls. Of course, you may have heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, specifically the Great Isaiah Scroll, which, whole another video topic right there, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the Dead Sea Scrolls here, but just know that the Essenes are the ones responsible for it. So that really covers everything we know about them. Like I said, we don't have a whole lot of information on them, but they are a very interesting group, and I'm very interested to know if you guys knew about them before this video, or if you're just learning about them now. I'd also like to know if you guys think we should cover the Samaritans, the Herodians, or the Scribes in our next video in this series. Well, that about does it. Uh, have a great day, and God bless you.